Teddy Atlas, good evening and welcome to the New York City Arena here in Midtown Manhattan for our main event. 12 rounds of welterweight action. Each man comes... And we are underway for this scheduled 12-rounder. I think you can just sense right away that strategy is going to be key here. This isn't going to be some wild type raw. This is going to be a very technical, strategic type fight. Absolutely, Joe. Each guy waiting for the other one to make the first mistake. Well, it's very easy to see here. You have one fighter who has a distinct advantage in terms of the reach. What do you have to do when you're fighting a guy who you know can bring that long arm out and get there before you can. Joe, there's two ways to deal with a taller fighter. One is the traditional way. Just tuck up, get a good defense, and make sure you start working your way in. Slip the punch, take that height advantage away. Bring your legs. The other is to step out, believe it or not. Elicit the taller guy to give up his height. Make him come to you. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Trying to go downstairs, but off target. Gets rid of that body shot. There you go. Nice strike after catching one by Silk. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Good flush shot upstairs. Do that again. That looks good. Do that one more time. You can almost see it just by the way a fighter sits down on their stool at the end of a round. As we come to the end of this round, you can tell that he's full of confidence and he can't wait to get right back out there and continue doing what he's doing. Well, you're right. The first thing that I notice is his back's not leaning against the corner pad. You know, that's a defeated fighter. That's a fighter. He don't want to go back. Something bad happens. So, you know, he's leaning back like that. You have to pick him up from the stool. He's got all his weight forward. He can't wait to get going. You know that he's positive. You know that he had a good round. Good defense is covering up down low. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Solid straight right hand. We're seeing a lot of work to the body here early on by him. Teddy. Is that a certain mentality, these guys that commit to being a body puncher? Yeah, because they understand that the body punching, you know, that's not something that's glorious. That's not something that, you know, like a great left hook on the chin, bang, it gets results right away. They understand that that's something that pays off later and something you got to start early and stay with. And makes that nice right angle on that hook upstairs. Okay, now get your hands up. Get your hands up. That's it. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Silk's really impressing us here tonight. That last round, boy, he was on top of his game and all over his opponents. Laid out some serious damage there. Yeah, I noticed that he's starting to land that uppercut a little bit. The only thing that I wouldn't be satisfied with what he did the last round, I would just look forward for confidence to do more as sort of a good roadmap to maybe even get a knockout victory here. Put something on top of those uppercuts. You know the uppercut's landing. Now put something up top. <laughs> Yeah, I like what I see. I love what I see, baby. And he ties up on the inside. Oh, 
Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. Blood sitting back right now, Teddy, and looking for that counterpunch opportunity, isn't he? Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. He's waiting, you know, he sees that his opponent is in his armory, so to speak. You know, he's in his castle. He's getting him to come out of his castle. He wants him to come out of his castle, so now he can attack. Solid hook. I need to see some head movement, more head movement. Teddy, I've heard you say it a million times early on in a fight. If there's any one piece of good advice you can give, it's start depositing it into that bank. Go to the body. Yeah, because the interest comes later, and you're going to see the payoff in the late rounds. Seconds remaining in this round. Go out there. Go out fight. Silk's ahead on Teddy's scorecard as we take a peek at those scores for the first time here today. Round number four just underway. After three rounds, he finds himself up just a round, but nothing really to pull away early on. Focus! Focus! Blood's left, landing well. He missed with that headshot. You're doing good. And he just holds on there. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Crawford. Crawford's defense on, is paying kid, off now. now. I need you to focus for me. Ninety seconds to go in round number four. Relax, come on now, relax. Deep breathe. Don't let him get at you. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. Come on, punch, punch, And punch, now just it. wasting away some time with that clinch. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. Gotta love the work by Crawford. Punches and punches. Let's see. Let the fist go. Let him go. Silk's knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend, one of them is to block. He did it there well. Ten seconds to go in the fourth. Another round, and if it keeps up with the rest of them, it'll be closely contested and hard to score. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Keep he took a shot, but up. he came back with a right hand of his own. And now he's targeting upstairs. Halfway into round number five here. Silk's punch didn't come close. Rushing blow up top. I don't know if he has enough time to recover. Oh, 
scored well upstairs with the right hand. Silk's throwing punches out there that may cost him dearly because these are perfect and prime to be countered with. Yeah, they are. They're a little too fat. And when they're a little bit too fat, guess what? The butcher's going to come over and he's going to cut that fat off. Oh, well, his opponent's going to throw in between them. I like the way he looked at the end of that round. It looks like he's gaining some momentum here. Good competitive fight. And I do believe that he's up on the scorecards. Yeah, I have it the same way. Tried the hook, didn't get it. Head knocking Move. with that right hand. Silk's left working well that time. Scored well up top. Halfway through round six. Very nice work to the head. The right hand landed. Just like Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. Silt's looking for a way to get this fight back on course. A course that can get him a victory. This isn't it. Just trying to counterpunch these middle rounds. No, this is not it. He's not thinking right. You know, it's one thing to say physically, technically, he needs to do that. But to do it, you have to be mentally clear. You have to be seeing the plan, seeing what you have to do, what you have to order your body to do. He's not seeing that right now. Final 10 seconds of the sixth round. Silk's approach to these remaining rounds is going to be critical. I believe, I think you do, that he's trailing on the scorecards, but I also think that he's capable of turning things around. Well, right now it's so close, it's going to come down to the inside, I believe. Whoever does not make those solid agreements, doesn't sign their name to the contract. You know, you get a little tired, it gets a little tough. You put your hands behind the guy, you hope the guy grabs and he goes along with it. Whoever doesn't go along with that, whoever brings their hands back and throws those punches, those two, those three, those four extra punches, they're going to win the fight. They both decide to bring it. Unable to score with the hook. Silk's whiff in there, a big wide sweeping shot, I mean, perfect to counter again. Yes it is, and you know it's only a matter of time, you know, that goes into the old computer, the old brain where the guy remembers that, and the next time he's going to capitalize on it. Good work toe to toe there, both fighters got in on him. on those punches. Double up. Come on. Double up on the punches. Hey! You gotta get some of that too now. Come on. Let's go. You see him holding on. Good right hand. What's left now getting into the mix. Coming towards the end of the seventh round, 10 seconds to go. Keep it up, keep it up. That's it now. Nice. Beginning of round number eight here. Teddy's scorecard has it in one direction. Blood's up on Teddy's scorecard. However, 
Teddy, I think there is some concern with him. He has taken some damage. Yeah, it's not a day at the beach. He thought it was at the beginning, the but that on, tide Chad, is rolling in. Able to cover up that gut. Silks is defense penetrated by a well-targeted uppercut. Bombs away with a hook by Crawford. There's that overhand right. Silk's using a lot of energy just by throwing so many punches, but he's not getting much out of all this effort at all. No, he's working much too hard. That's a good point there. He's working really too hard for what he's getting done. He has to now start to educate himself, start to, you know, place those punches in the right spots. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. He took a go of it to the body, but came up empty. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Blood! Bang to the noggin! And that does it for this round. Crawford's well-conditioned to the realities of this harsh business of boxing. But even though we know what we've seen out of some ringside scorecards through the years, I'd be shocked if everybody doesn't have him ahead in this fight right now. Yeah, but never be shocked in this business because you never know with these blind judges sometimes. I hate to say it that bluntly, but time and time again, you just get shocked when you hear the score at the end of the night. Teddy, when you've been in the corner in your career and you have a charge who is not making a lot of contact, what do you tell him? The first thing I tell him, Joe, is shorten up your punches a little bit. The other thing I tell him is he's making you miss, so you know what? Faint him a little bit. Get a false move out of him. Get a premature move. And when he moves, then time him. Now you're going to catch him. That's what I want to see, baby. That's what I want to see. Halfway through the ninth round. That's what I like to see. That's my man. Keep fighting, baby. Targeting that straight left hand. Big power punch by Crawford. Crawford's movement's really helping him out, avoiding that punch. That's it. That's it. Just like that. Just like that. Keep moving. Last 10 seconds of the ninth round. Not the most accurate uppercut you'll see. Crawford's enjoying a good lead, and he just showed you why in that last round. Teddy, he's the fresher fighter. He has his legs. As we're in the deeper stages of this fight, he still seems like he has his gas tank on full. Yeah, and he has his trainers and all his people in his camp to thank for it because they did the work before they got there. That was a fine block by Sil. Little head hunting with the left. to the head and he's holding silk jam by an uppercut keep moving keep moving that's it that's it move your head Blood 
Rob's chosen a path here where he will not stand toe-to-toe -to -toe opposite his opponent. He's using some very good movement here against him. Yeah, he is. He's using those feet. He's using those wheels real well. But the key here is where to use them. He has to make sure that he breaks it off to the side every once in a while, not straight back. Otherwise, he'll get time. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own a left-hand score. Back to the body. Back to the body. Didn't get it done. Crawford dropped. Oh, and there you go. He goes down in the later stages of this round. He's going to try to survive it. One, two, three, four, five. Crawford's going to keep taking this test, rising up after being knocked down. Listen, I need to see some counterpunches, okay? Whatever he misses. Start of round number 11. What's up on Teddy's scorecard? Just six minutes to go in this fight, Teddy. I assume at this point, just take some good advice from your corner and secure this win. Yeah, you have the winning lottery ticket in your hand. Don't throw it in the garbage. Crawford One, two, showing One, two, us two, that he is willing pop, to stick pop. with the game plan. But, Teddy, that game plan saw him knocked down earlier in this fight. What would you be telling him? You know, in some ways, I'd tell him good because you have to go great. with what you have. Yeah, you know, baby, you can't work, completely work. change. That's not possible in the course of the fight. You are who you are. So it's not the game plan necessarily, Joe, or the style that's wrong. It's the execution of the game plan. That has to be done better. Silk's flat-footed. There's no other way to describe it. He's not a fighter that gets up on his toes, moves around, gives you angles. He's flat-footed. Yeah, you don't have to be on your tricep all over the... And out of nowhere, things can turn like that, Teddy. Everything was looking good. Now it's looking bad for him. Well, that's exactly why, because nothing was coming at him. His opponent wasn't throwing back. He got a little lax, and he paid a price. <laughs> Nice work on the right hand by Silk. Turn that hook over, but couldn't turn it into a connect. Oh, that's good stuff. Fire it right back with one of his own. Good work by Crawford. Scores up top with a left. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with this counter punching. And round 11 comes to an end. Silk's got to come up with something here because his eye just closed. Yeah, well, what he has to do is his opponent knows what he has to do. His opponent has to throw punches from that side. What he has to do is take that side away from him. Position himself in the ring where those punches are not available to his opponent. Blood's in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teaching. Let's give the trainers credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. Solid left hand to the head. work there after blocking that blow. Halfway through this 12th and final round. Looking good, baby. You're looking real good. He is not in good shape. Look at that. He was able to get up and continue on last time. Now he goes down again. Crawford 
showing you what he is made of, getting up off the canvas after being knocked down. Got to try to do better than that. He missed with that hook. See, he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. And they will bring it home in the last 10 seconds of this final round. Well, you should lose your judge's license if you have it any other way but the obvious here, Teddy. Yeah, if they do that, I want to put those guys on a poster, a wanted poster, if you don't want them. Here's our ring announcer. Crawford's your winner by majority decision. Very close fight, but more importantly, a satisfying fight for everybody, especially the fans. For